Call to worship from Psalm chapter 103, verse 1 to 3. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your, your diseases. Hymn of preparation, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. rise. Take a few minutes for personal prayer confession.
Please take the moment of your own personal praise and confessions. Isaiah chapter one, verse nineteen said, "Come now and let us reason together," said the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, the Lord who created heaven and earth, and who created our life. You have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have gone our own way, not loving as we ought, not loving our neighbors as ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Dear Lord, we are bowing our heads and laying our life before you to ask for your forgiveness. We confess to you for the wrong that we have done and the things that we have ignored. We know that by our own act we are not worth it. Search us, O oh Lord, and know our heart. Give us true repentance. Transform us by your Spirit to live for you each day, to learn to serve each one another, and through the grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Only you can save us. Help us to see you and to live with your wisdom. And thank you, Jesus, for teaching us how to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever. Amen. Good morning, and good morning, and welcome to Watana English Service. And we did like to, to have each one of you to our. Um, Service today, especially for today, and I would like you to take some time to greet one another. And today we have this Sunday. This Sunday we have a special guest. He's from from Hong Kong. Yes, he's from Hong Kong, and actually, but he is our uh, he is an American missionary to China. Please. Uh, welcome, uh, Pastor Dennis Balcom. He served as some missionaries in um, to Chinese people, and he is a pastor of Revival Christian Church in Hong Kong, and he speaks fluently in Chi in Chinese. So then, it's one of you if you can speak Chinese and come and speak to him because he he and his whole family speak fluently. Chinese, and um, he's been he's been living in Hong Kong for forty seven years. Yes, forty seven years. And um, from what I have read about his um, his life, he's been arrested numbers of times from the Chinese government. And um, and today, actually, we please welcome Mr. Alex. He's he's the one who introduced um, Pastor Dennis to us. He's he's from Hong Kong as well, but he lives in Bangkok. Yes, he shared. Mr. Alex shares to me that um, Pastor Dennis, he is the first-hand um, experience to talk about the human rights in China. So then, um, he he served in Chinese and um, sharing the word of God. In China for numbers for numbers of years, and he's also arrested numbers of time uh, because of 
he would like to share the gospel or the life of Jesus. So then today he will, he will share his um, ministries and also his life to us. And also, oh, I forgot. And today is a great opportunity for us as well because if you would like to know more about his life and also his, mis- his ministries, he would, he, w- he would like to give us also the two books one is about his um his life and his family. Also, like you will also give a, get the postcard about his family because he you can um uh keep or remind this postcard be reminding about his his family. We can also pray for him and his his wife was born in Thailand. Be- because she's a daughter of the missionary, American missionaries. She was born in Chiang Mai, Macomic, the hospital, Macomic Hospital in Chiang Mai. So then um, his family also have some related to us as well. So then after, after the service, if um, you're interested to get um, two of his books, so then please come forward to, to him and he will give you your signatures and also you will get the... Um, his books well and also um, his this is the map of China and also the his ministry to the Chinese people so then you also get um, all of this as well and I have one announcement as it's very important because you know that today as in Paul Smith is not with us today um, he got he had a stroke last Sunday uh, actually after the service but we didn't know so then now he's in hospital in a coma. So then please, please pray for him. Last night he ha- actually he needed operation last night, but uh, his conditions couldn't get into the operation. So then uh, the doctor will evaluate again this morning that he able to be in the, hosp- in the operations, the brain operations or not. So then please, please um, reminding him in your in your personal prayer as well. And also we have, um, we would like to uh, inform you again about the cards, of the press and pray card, that we update the prayer and press cards every, every week. So then if you have any of the requests that you would like us to pray for or anything that you want to press God, so then you can press your press item as well in the, in the card that you got in, inside the bulletin. So now we would like, I would like to take this opportunity to pray for us and Paul, and let us pray together. Dear Heavenly Fathers, we bow our heads and our heart before you today to submit our life. And dear Lord, please empower us with your Holy Spirit, and lead every step we walk. And Lord, we come before you today in need of your healing hands. We pray for our faithful pastor, Ajahn Paul Smith, who is in a hospital right now. And God, please, may your healing hands touch him and fix all the problems that he is facing right now. May doctor give the great treatment from God's guidance. Please comfort him and also his sickness and ease his suffering. We beg for deliverance and submit that no healing is too hard for you. We pray that you, you bless him and also you, his family. And this morning, and God, please be with the doctors and also please strengthen, and strengthen his, his health that he can get into the operations and all the operations will go well and as in Paul will get to will be in God's hands and will God will heal him and fix all the damage that happens in his health. And also we pray for our one of one of our Nagaland missionaries. That's now she's she already got the surgery and now she's enduring her recovery. So then God, please be with her and strengthen her. And we put all of our faithful pastor into your hands. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
The scripture reading for this morning comes from the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 2 to 4. The Lord's answer. Then the Lord replied, Write down the revela revelation and make it plain on the tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits at an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. See, the enemy is puffed up. His desires are not upright. But the righteous person will live by his faithfulness. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. For this morning, we will have a great opportunity to hear the sermon from Ajahn Dennis Balcom. The sermon title is Revival in the Chinese Church and the Mission Mandate. Thank you very much. I'm very honored to be able to share with you this morning, and I trust the Lord will speak to all of us. I have been in China for 47 years, and, but China wasn't open until 1978. So before that time, I came to Hong Kong and uh, learned Chinese and started a church called Revival Christian Church. Now our church has about 1,400 people. I also have a church in Paris, France, of about 700 people. So I go back and forth between Paris and Hong Kong. And we have a few churches in uh, China. And we spend a lot of our time in China. And uh, we see the Lord doing a wonderful work. Our nation is, of course, a communist government. Yet China opened the doors to visitors and tourists in 1978. So we go into China. I've been arrested a few times and blacklisted and things like that. But we still do our best to minister to China. <clears throat> so I want to share with you this subject, Revival in the Chinese Church and the Mission Mandate. Okay. This is a call to all of us to preach the gospel. Now, God loves the Chinese people. We say he must love the Chinese people because he made so many of them. About 20% of the people in the world actually live in China. And you know, China has the largest population in the world, and more people speak Chinese than any other language in the world. 1.2 billion people speak Chinese as their mother tongue. Only about 300 million people speak English as their mother tongue. But of course, a lot of people, like many of you, speak English as a second language. So a total of 1.5 billion people in the world speak English. That's more than <clears throat> Chinese. But 1.2 billion people speak Chinese as their mother tongue. Well, this is Chinese. This is John 3.16. And all missionaries, usually when they learn to be a missionary, they learn the language. One of the first verses they learn is John 3.16. Now, in Mandarin, which is a national language, this is how we say it. But I speak a language called Cantonese, which is spoken in Hong Kong. It's a very tonal language. We have nine different tones, even more than Thai. So you can listen to the tones. This is Cantonese. So they're actually completely different languages and spoken. And if you speak Cantonese in mainland China, many of the people don't even know that you're speaking a Chinese language. But we all write the same, basically. But there's simplified Chinese in mainland China and traditional Chinese in Hong Kong and in Taiwan. And this is traditional Chinese. Now, a lot of people don't know that there's a prophecy that's in the book of Isaiah that says that uh, people are going to come to Jerusalem and worship the Lord. They're going to come from far. He, needs, he, ne he mentions two directions, from the north and then from the west. But also, it doesn't mention the east, but he says from the land of Sinem. Now, if you go to Israel, you say Sinem, they know, oh, that is China. Now, in the Chinese translation, it says here, from the kingdom of Qin, Qin Guo. Now, you've probably heard of the terracotta army of the first emperor called the Emperor Qin. That was about 220 
42 BC when he established China the first time ever as one nation. And it's been one nation from that time until now, many different dynasties. Before that, China was like Europe, many different nations all fighting among themselves. But in 221 BC, the Emperor Qin established China as a united nation. And that's why we call the Chinese people the Chinese from the Qin dynasty or the Emperor Qin. That's amazing that this is actually in the Bible. And we have a lot of Christians in China. We have a great revival in China. I will show some pictures and some information in a minute. Now, not just China, but around the world, this is the time of the harvest. The church is doing great around the world, especially in many third world nations, in China, in Korea, in Indonesia, in India, in South America, in many parts of Africa. We're seeing a great revival. It's estimated some 1,000 churches are started every day somewhere in the world. We're living in the time of a great harvest. So Jesus said to his disciples, don't say there's four months and then comes the harvest, but lift up your eyes and look on the fields because now is the time of the harvest. And I travel around the world. Just last year alone, I went around the world three times. Every year I'll go around the world at least two to three times. Virtually every nation I've been in. And this is the time of the harvest. Now, <clears throat> China not only is a nation that needs missionaries, and there's thousands of missionaries in China, but you can't go as a missionary, you can go as a student, as a tourist, as a businessman. Many, many missionaries have different, uh, you know, titles on their uh, application, but they don't go as a missionary. But there's thousands of missionaries in China. But China now is sending missionaries around the world. We call in China, Xinjiao de Zhongguo. China is a missionary sending nation. Well, I live in Hong Kong, which is a special administrative region, and it's in the southern part of China. Now, let's, I just, uh, uh, our pastor shared some of uh, the books that I have there that I would like to give to you free of charge. So, uh, come up. I have two different books. Maybe you can take one of the two, and I'd be glad to sign the name. One book is about my testimony, about how I was called to China, and uh, started a church, and how the doors of China opened. The other book is called God's Opening Door. It's about the work of the Holy Holy Spirit and revival, and the, even about the history of the church in China. You'll be amazed. So you can get those books, and they're free of charge, and so come after the service and also get a prayer map. Now, in the first book, is called One Journey, One Nation. I share my testimony. At 16, I was filled with the Holy Spirit, and I wanted to be a missionary. And I said, where should I go? And I don't know why. I was praying, and God said, go to Red China, to the People's Republic of China. And then I read in the Bible this scripture in Acts chapter, excuse me, Psalms chapter 2, verse 8. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for your possession. Well, China was even then and today is the largest nation which the largest numbers of unreached people. But China was closed. That was 1961. I've been preaching the gospel for actually 55 years. I just turned 70 years old. And I thank the Lord that he gave me this opportunity to come to Asia and to come to China. Well, this is a picture of my family you can get. My wife was born in Chiang Mai. Her parents were medical missionaries. They actually started the McCormick Hospital. And now it's under the Church of Christ in Thailand before it was the Presbyterian Church. So she only spoke Thai as her mother tongue. So you can see this is my wife here. So she got married to me, and I said, well, we don't speak Thai in Hong Kong. We speak Chinese. I learned to speak in Chinese. I could preach in it in seven months. So I said, I will give you a full year. So after one year, we were married in 1971. We began to speak Chinese at home. We've never spoken once English, once, even in our, the last 45 years. And my children, I've never once spoken English with them. I spoke Chinese at home because we're Chinese. When you are a missionary, you become a part of the people that you're called to. So my children went to Chinese school, so their Chinese is very fluent. And my daughter got married to a very handsome young man, and they had two children. And so my granddaughter is 18 years old, my grandson is 16 years old, and they also are called to be missionaries to China. My granddaughter is now going to a very famous music school in Boston, America, called the Berkeley School of Music, because she wants to use music to be able to evangelize the people in China. That's the call on her life. Well, when I was young, I was called to China, much of the world was closed. You know, you had uh, 
Soviet Union, of course China, and North Korea, and Vietnam, and Eastern Europe, there were not many places a young person could consider to go, maybe Africa, maybe South America, maybe Western Europe or Australia. But now the world has changed. Communism has collapsed in most nations with the exception of North Korea. And now China has opened to the gospel. Vietnam has opened to the gospel. I was in Vietnam as a soldier in the war. Though I was a Christian, I didn't kill anybody. And I preached the gospel when I was there. Now I go back as a Christian soldier preaching the gospel in Vietnam. It's amazing what God is doing just recently. Cuba is opening more and more. Well, this is what the Lord said to one of the seven churches called the Church at Philadelphia, the Church of Brotherly Love. He said that uh, <clears throat> he has the key of David. That we think of David had David's tabernacle, a man after God's heart, worship and praise and honoring God. He says, I have the key of David. And I open doors and no one can shut, and shut doors and no one can open. He said, Behold, I have given you an open door, and no one can shut it. And that's my message. Uh, we have a ministry of taking Bibles to China. We began in 1979. We've taken over 12 million Bibles to China. I personally have taken 60,000 Bibles to China. That's why I've been arrested and detained for a few times, because they don't like that. They need Bibles in China. And so we still are taking Bibles to China. We also are buying Bibles from the official Three Self Church to give to the house church. In the last two months alone, we've purchased a 110,000 Bibles from the official church to give to the house church. And you know, these people come because God opened the door. God opened the door. We've had thousands and thousands of people, and many came, and eventually some got married to Chinese, and some went and lived in China, or they went back overseas and ministered to the Chinese people. It's a time of an open door, not the closed door. Now, let me just share you a little bit of information. China in 1949, when it became a communist nation, was less than 0.5% Christian. There were 700,000 Protestants and 3 million Roman Catholics. But now there's at least 80 to 90 million Protestants and about 12 million Roman Catholics. That's over 100 million. We think it's a, probably closer to 130 million. It's now between... Uh, Eight to nine percent of the population, which is more than Thailand, more than many nations. Hey, can you think of that? It's a great miracle in the last 60 years alone. And I've seen thousands come to the Jesus. I've baptized many hundreds of people myself. Now, this is because of the work of the Holy Spirit and because of miracles and healings. You ask people in China, why did you become a Christian? Without exception, I saw a miracle. Someone was healed. Demons were cast out of someone. Someone raised from the dead. And that's why people believe in Jesus, because of the miracles. Now, there's been a lot of persecution, but the persecution has been a factor in the revival. Now, here we have uh, information about the Protestant Reformation that began with Martin Luther in 1517. That was the foundation for the great missionary outreach that we saw beginning in the 19th and the 20th centuries. You had uh, C.T. Studd, the Cambridge Seven, you had William Carey, you had Robert Morrison, you had Hudson Taylor, you had Livingston, and these many people went to all the nations. And of course, my wife's parents came to Thailand, and it was very difficult in those days. But now even Thailand is seeing a move of God. I spoke for a camp uh, called from, put on by the Hope Church a few years ago in Pattaya, and there were over 8,000 people, almost all young people in that one meeting. God is moving in this nation. He's moving around the world. It's because of the foundation of the gospel. Now, I'm going to share what this has to do with Habakkuk in a few minutes, okay? Now, later on, there were great Holy Spirit-initiated revivals that flow throughout China. Now, tens of millions of Chinese people they have a vision for world missions. We call this the Back to Jerusalem mandate. They want to take the gospel to all the nations and back to Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost over 2,000 years ago. Later on, <clears throat> there was a church called the Church of Antioch. They sent up Paul and Barnabas, and later on the gospel went to Europe. It went throughout all of Europe after the Reformation. The gospel went to North and South America. It went to uh, Africa, many nations. And in the 20th century, 
It began to come back to Asia. Missionaries went to Korea, went to China, went to the Philippines, came to uh, Thailand. Now we see great revival in these nations, and the vision is to take the gospel back to Jerusalem, to all the nations that haven't been reached, to fulfill the great command, which is go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You may have heard about Brother Yoon. He's my good friend. I've been in prison with him before. Uh, we've been beaten by the police. He's now a very famous Christian living in Germany. He wrote a book called The Heavenly Man. He escaped from China in 1988, and he shares his testimony all over the world. He is one of the most famous Chinese Christians. And he can't go back to China, but he travels around the world. He's been featured in many articles and magazines and interviewed over and over again. Just a simple, humble Chinese preacher, but filled with the Holy Spirit. And God has used him to touch the nations. Even years ago, he took a picture with the former president of the United States. Amazing. The Lord opened doors for this man called Brother Yoon, the heavenly man. Now, every year I go to Jerusalem two to three times, and there's thousands of Chinese that go to Jerusalem to pray, to learn, to evangelize. Here people are praying at the western wall, the great wall, or the weeping wall for the return of Jesus. Of course, the Jewish people are praying for the Messiah to come, and Jesus is the Messiah. But that will not happen until the gospel has been preached to all the nations. This is the Back to Jerusalem vision. Now, us here in Thailand, it means a lot to us because we want to preach the gospel to the nations, okay? So there's been a time of restoration and revival. Now the call is to take the gospel to the Hindus, to the Buddhists, to the communists, and approximately 1.5 billion followers of Islam and eventually we'll all be a part of this back to Jerusalem vision and obey the Great Commission, which you just read is to take the gospel to all the nations. And when that has happened, then Jesus will come back. This is Matthew 24, 14. The gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all nations as a witness to all people, and then shall the end come. And we will also be a blessing to the Jewish people everywhere. Now, let me tell you, why did people become Christians in China? I've seen thousands come to the Lord. I've preached to crowds of thousands and crowds of just maybe 2, 20, 30 people. It's because of miracles. This is what Paul said. He said, I'm not going to boast about my accomplishment, about my education, about my status as a Roman citizen. I'm just going to tell you what God did through me in word and deed and through mighty signs and wonders. Now, the word is very important. I had to learn Chinese. If you're going to be a missionary in Thailand, you learn the Thai language. Word is important. You know, so we use PowerPoint. We have different ways to teach, but also the deeds. The deeds that Paul talked about were not starting hospitals, which is great. My wife's parents did that in Chiang Mai. But it is the miracles, healing the sick, Casting out the devils, he said, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I begin in Jerusalem, went to Lycrium, which is actually Yugoslavia, two continents, I fully preach the gospel of Christ. Now, Jesus said, when you go, you preach, you say, the kingdom of heaven is here, the rule of God is here, you heal the sick, you uh, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, and you cast out the demons, freely you've received, freely give. Even a famous Catholic missionary called St. Francis in uh, Malacca, Malaysia, was reported to have raised someone from the dead back in the 16th century. Does it happen? Yes, I have seen it. I've seen people who've been raised from the dead. It's not any different from healing of a headache or a flu. It's the same power of God. Now, I've heard many, many miracles and seen many miracles. I've heard people that have been filled with the Holy Spirit and spoken another language that I understood. Two or three times it was fluent English. Even better, one man was speaking in Oxford accent English. He didn't know one word of English, and he was quoting from the book of Psalms using Shakespearean English. I heard that. I was amazed. He doesn't know a word of English. We've had that happen many times in China. We've had many missionaries that don't know a word of Chinese speak in fluent Chinese. How could this happen? It has a miracle. And other miracles is I prayed for people with AIDS a few years ago, five years ago, were given a two weeks to live, and they are healthy. After one week, they were cleared of AIDS. They are now serving the Lord. Uh, we've seen people with cancers healed. Uh, I've seen many crippled get up and walk. I have videos of that. No time to show you today, of course. And 
Thousands have come off of drug addiction uh, after being filled with the Holy Spirit. There's a woman called Jackie Pullinger in Hong Kong has a ministry with the drug addicts. Thousands of drug addicts have come off of drugs after believing in Jesus and being filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm going to get to Habakkuk in a minute because Habakkuk talks about vision. Today, God wants to give us vision. You know, in everything in society, in business, in religion, in government, it begins with vision. A company may have a mission statement. They're not missionaries, they're not Christians, but that is the vision of our company, where we want to go. Well, in English, in the old King James Version, it says, without a vision, the people perish. And in another translation, it says, where there's no revelation, the people cast off restraint. God is speaking to people today. Now, in the Old Testament, who had a vision? The prophets, people like Moses, you know, great men that God had called. He said, if there is a prophet, I will make myself known to him in a vision. But in the New Testament, the Bible says, in the last days, God will part of his spirit upon all flesh. And he says, your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. When I was 16, I had a vision. I'm going to go to China. China's going to be saved. And it's come past. I spent most of my life in China. Yes, there's difficulties, just persecution. Thank the Lord. It makes me pray more. It keeps me humble. It keeps me close to the Lord. But in spite of that, we have seen that vision come to pass. I've seen thousands saved. And quite often now I even go into the official church, the Three South Church, with the permission of the government and preach to thousands of people on a regular basis. It's because God gave me a vision. And I believe God wants to give you a vision. Now let's go into Habakkuk. This is a very fascinating scripture. Habakkuk lived in a very difficult time. We don't know a lot from the book of Habakkuk about the historical uh, situation, but we believe they were surrounded by enemies, maybe the Babylonians, what well, was the Babylonians, the Chaldeans. And so Habakkuk had a real crisis of faith because he saw violence and sin in Israel among the Jewish people and God didn't do anything. And then he was so perplexed and he complained to the Lord, Lord, I see these things. Righteousness doesn't go forth. There is no justice. And then he said, Lord, you're so pure. Why can you look on these things and not do anything? Why do you hold your tongue? See, he had a crisis of faith. A lot of people have a crisis of faith. Think of the Jews in World War II. Why did God allow six million Jews to be killed by Adolf Hitler? Think of Issa State killing Christians in Ethiopia and, and Egypt. Think of all the tsunamis and disasters and things that go wrong, even here in Thailand. Where is God? Sometimes we have a crisis of faith. Where is God? Why is God not doing something? Why is there so much evil? Why, why, why? But he didn't complain to other people. He complained to the Lord and he prayed. He went on his watchtower. He went to the Lord. When John the Baptist has a crisis of faith, he was in prison. He sent his disciples to Jesus. Are you he that should come or should we wait for someone else? And so the Lord had given him a revelation as he was praying. And he said, we just read it. I'm going to give you a vision, Habakkuk. You write it on tables. You write it very clearly. Make it very clearly, because it's going to happen. Now, our church is called Revival Church. Now, we're not the biggest church. In Hong Kong, many churches have 8,000 people. We only have less than 2,000. But I preach revival. I preach God is going to do a great thing, and my nation, China, is going to be saved. We have now 8 to 9% Christian. I believe by the year 2035 or 2040, it'll be at least 30%. I believe it. I believe every nation will open. I believe that Muslims are going to be saved by the millions. Buddhists are being saved all around the the world. I go to Indonesia three or four times a year. The government says 15% are Christian, but actually it's closer to 30%. This is a time of revival. Write the vision. Make it clear. Now, there's two main revelations that God gave to the prophet Habakkuk. The first has to do with this as Protestants. This was a revelation in 
1, uh, 2, 4, it says the just shall live by his faith, which should really be his faithfulness. You know, there's a, a teaching we call hyper grace or super grace. It's, everything is grace. There's no need to repent or confess your sins. There's a big church in Singapore that teaches that, and I do not believe in that. We need to confess our sins. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. So faith could also say faithfulness. But you know, you're not saved by works of the law. You're saved by faith in Jesus Christ alone. You're not saved by going to church, by praying, by giving money in the offering. You're saved by repentance and believing in Jesus Christ. Now that was the revelation that God gave Habakkuk that was written in the book of Romans by the Apostle Paul, the just shall live by faith. And that was the revelation that began the Protestant Reformation. And we're a part of that. Thank the Lord. But then there was another prophecy in chapter 2 and verse 14, that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Doesn't mean everybody's going to be saved, but they will know about God. They will somehow hear about the gospel, maybe like in China, because of miracles that happen. They will know that Jesus is the Savior. And this is the day that we're living in. And I'll just share one testimony. A man called H.A. Baker was a missionary that went to Yunnan back in the first part of the 20th century. He started an orphanage called the Dulam Refuge Center. And many children came into the orphanage, and they were not educated, but they began to see visions. And they saw Jesus, and they saw angels, and they saw heaven, and they saw hell. He wrote a book called Visions Beyond the Veil. That's a very popular book today. And that work went on to this day. Those children, many of them grew up to be pastors in the churches in China. His grandson was called Roland Baker. He got married to a lady called Heidi Baker. She was in my church for seven years. She can speak Chinese. She went to Mozambique, and they've started over 10,000 churches. In fact, the province there in the Mozambique is now considered Christian. It was Muslim before, and she travels around the world. Okay, now, just in closing a few things, this will only happen as we speak it, as we preach it, as we tell people about it. We go to prison sometimes in China for preaching the gospel. You have freedom in Thailand. Now, maybe people's hearts are not open, but they need to hear. Speak of the glory of the Lord. So in the end, Habakkuk, he met God, and he got a revelation. Now, it was a difficult time, but he said, I'm going to seek after the Lord. So he wrote a song that he sung in the church or the temple that day, and the song went that way. I have heard your speech, and I was afraid. Oh, Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. Are you praying for revival? In our church in Hong Kong, we gather 7 to 8.30 every morning. We have dozens of people to pray for revival. We begin every year with 21 days of fasting and prayer. Some people just take water. Some take fruit juice. Every year we begin in January, which is a cold time in Hong Kong, with 21 days of fasting and prayer. We are seeing God move. The church, every few months, we have dozens baptized. But we want to see a great revival. We're praying for it. Praise the Lord. And in the end... The hot prophet Habakkuk, he began to worship the Lord. He said, everything is going wrong. The fruit tree isn't blossoming. The fruit is not on the vines. The labor of the olive may fail. The fields may not yield any food, so on and so forth. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. I pray that God will give you a heavenly vision. I pray that God will move in your lives and you will receive the anointing. Thank you very much. And please feel free to make yourself of the books at the end. Thank you. Offertory, you shall surely give to him, and your heart should not be grieved when you give to him, because for this thing the Lord your God will bless you in all, all your works and in all which you put your hand, from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 15, verse 10. We will remain seated when we sing him, when we walk with the Lord.
Let's just stand up and sing doxology together. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you and dwell within you this day and evermore. Amen. visited. People need the Lord, so go and serve the Lord. May God bless you.